بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله continuing with our lesson from the سيرة from سيرة نبوية the prophetic biography إن شاء الله this week what we're la- or rather last week we talked about <coughs> some of the uh, sufferings of the early Muslims and especially the persecution that started once the message of the Prophet ﷺ went public, then there was a lot of persecution of the Muslims at that time. And we talked about that in a lot of detail in the previous session. Um, and of course the culprit um, behind a lot of the oppression and violence and aggression against the early believers was Abu Jahl. And we talked about you know, him and the suffering and the plight of a lot of the early believers in quite a bit of detail. What I wanted to talk about today, um, before we actually move forward, um, it's a very interesting story uh, about Abu Jahl. So in the height of all this persecution of all the different Muslims that was going on, and you can basically placed this at around third and fourth year of prophethood. So in the third year of prophethood is when the message went public. So during the third and fourth year, all these stories that we talked about in the previous session, the whole long list of sahaba, the family of uh, Yasir, Yasir, his wife Sumayya, the son of Ammar. We talked about the different uh, women, the sahabiyat who underwent a lot of persecution. Bilal radiallahu anhu, Khabab bin al radiallahu anhu. All of this was transpiring over the third and fourth year of prophethood. Third and fourth year of Nubuwa. Around that same time, there's actually a little bit of an entertaining story, and it's interesting, about Abu Jahl. So amidst all this persecution, Ibn Ishaq relates, and other historians have also mentioned this particular narration and story, it's been authenticated by hadith scholars, that there was a man from the tribe, from the people of Irash. So he's basically referred to, nobody really knew his name, he's just referred to as Irashi. Qissatul Irashi. This is a story of the Irashi man, the Irashi individual, because he came from the tribe, the people of Irash. He had come to Makkah to do some business. This was a small, humble villager from a small, humble town. He brought some goods and he came basically to Makkah to do business. And he ran into none other than Abu Jahl and decided to enter into a little bit of a business venture with Abu Jahl. The problem was that Abu Jahl took his merchandise, his goods from him and said, I'll pay you for this, you know, tomorrow or whatever. I'll pay you in a couple of days. I'm good for it. Ask everybody. Everybody knows me. Hey, you know me? You know me? Everybody knows me. So don't worry about it. I'm not going nowhere. You're, you know, you can come and collect from me. You know where to find me. And the man shows up in a couple of days time, whatever time Abu Jahl had given him, the man shows up to collect. And Abu Jahl says, who are you? What merchandise? What money? What do you, what do you, do you, anybody know what he's talking about? And of course Abu Jahl kind of being a ringleader of all these troublemakers, everybody's like, yeah, we don't know what you're talking about, we have no idea, man, get out of here, look at this crazy guy coming over here. And basically just dismissed him, and figured, you know, just take advantage of this little villager, he doesn't have his tribe, he doesn't have his people here, I'm Abu Jahl. Makkah, I'm a big dog here in Makkah and Quraysh. So nobody can mess with me, like this silly little villager. No one's gonna listen to what this guy has to say. And just kind of shoot him away. Shoo, 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 go, 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 go. Now, you can imagine this man is heartbroken. He basically brought his life savings, left his family, traveled very, from very far away, came to Makkah with the hopes of t- o- turning over some profit, being able to take it back home, and being able to build on whatever he had back home. And he's broke. He's empty-handed. The story even talks about how he didn't even have, you know, food to eat. He had nothing. This was everything that he had. And he goes into the haram, he goes into the Kaaba. He goes into the haram near the Kaaba, and he basically goes there, and he calls out to the people, screams out. And he says, Ya ma'ashar al-Quraysh, man rajulun, يُعْدِينِي عَلَىٰ أَبِي الْحَكَمْ بِنْ هِشَامِ 
Who amongst you, O people of Quraysh, O society of Quraysh, the people that we heard so much about? Quraysh, Ahlul Haram, Khuddamul Hujjaj. You amazing people that we look up to, that we heard so much about, that I came here so hopeful of meeting and doing business with. Who amongst you will help me against Abu Hakam? That was Abu Jahal's laqab before Abu Jahal. He was called Abu Hakam by the Meccans. So who will help me against him? فَإِنِّي غَرِيبٌ وَابْنُ سَبِيلٍ I'm, I'm a traveler. I'm, I'm on the road. I have nothing to eat, nowhere to stay, no clothes, no nothing. وَقَدْ غَلَبَنِي عَلَى حَقِّي And he's taken my right from me. And it said, the narration says that some of the people that were sitting there, some of the other leaders of Quraysh, they started to say, تَرَى ذَلِكَ الرَّجُلُ تَرَى ذَلِكَ الرَّجُلُ Look, 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 look. They started to point at him and started to mock him, make fun of him. وَهُمْ يَهْزَعُونَ بِهِ They were making fun of him. They're like, look at that guy, check him out. Look at him, silly little guy. What's he talking about? And they all started to mock him and make fun of him. And this man is standing there in the middle of people, pouring his heart out, and getting mocked and made fun of, after he has been oppressed. I mean, just try to imagine the plight of the individual. Just being ripped off like that in broad daylight, being standing there broke, not knowing what to eat, how to get back home, empty-handed. And the man who has taken your money or your merchandise and refuses to pay you, is sitting right there, you're looking at him. Imagine the heartache and the heartbreak. His man is there, tears in his eyes, screaming and yelling, pouring his heart out. And then on top of that, he's getting made fun of. So you can imagine this individual and what he was going through. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also there in the haram at that time. And even before the Prophet ﷺ noticed this man and heard what he had to say, some of the other Quraysh, some of these, the, the individuals of Quraysh who were mocking and making fun of this man, they went over to the Prophet ﷺ. And because they knew that the Prophet of Allah ﷺ and Abu Jahl did not get along. Because Abu Jahl was the primary culprit, he was the main culprit behind you know, taunting the Prophet ﷺ. There's a story that precedes this story that I didn't uh, really touch on. But the story basically talks about how the Prophet of Allah ﷺ was one day praying in the Kaaba. Praying meaning at the Haram, near the Kaaba, in front of the Kaaba. And the leaders of Quraysh were sitting there and some of them started to egg on Abu Jahl because they knew he had a bad temper. And what's interesting about Abu Jahl is we know Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was also very temperamental. Abu Jahl was basically his khal, he was his mamu, he was his uncle from his mother's side, he was his mother's brother. So you can kind of see that the, the temperamental nature kind of ran in the family. So they knew that Abu Jahl was a little bit, to get riled up easily. So they started egging on Abu Jahl, like, hey, hey, look, look. Look, he comes over here, rubs it in our faces. You can't even do nothing about it. Look at that, just broad daylight, rubs it in your face. Abu Jahl said, oh really? Is that, is, that, is that it? That's what you think? That's what you think is going on over here? And the narration says that he jumped up and took, he was wearing like a scarf or something around his neck. And he pulled the scar off and he went, stood behind the Prophet ﷺ, put it around his neck and started to choke him, strangle him. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was there in the haram, saw this and he came running over and body checked Abu Jahl. He came over, ran over to him and he tackled him. Pushed him aside. And then he quoted the same words that Rajulun Mu'minun min Ali Fir'aun said. The Qur'an talks about this. That the, in Surah Mu'min, the surah that is named after the believer from the people of Fir'aun, there was, a, there was an undercover believer amongst the people of Fir'aun. Who when they started to plot and conspire to kill Musa alayhi salam, he stood up in the council and he said, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Are you really seriously sitting here trying, talking about killing a man? All he does is say that my Lord, my Master is Allah, Rabbi Allah. وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And on top of that, he's come to you with clear proofs and evidences from your Lord. And you want to kill this man? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu spoke similar words. 
And said, أَتَقْتُلُونَ You want to kill this man just simply because he prefers one Lord, one Allah over all these idols that you worship? And so these events had transpired before. And so based off of that, it was public knowledge now in Quraysh that Abu Jahl and the Prophet ﷺ don't see eye to eye. Muhammad ibn Abdullah and Abu Jahl, Abu Al-Hakam, they, Amr bin Hisham, they don't get along. And so they start. They go to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Hey, look, 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 listen to what he's saying. Listen, listen, pay attention to what he's saying. Listen to whom he's complaining about. Like about whom he's complaining. Listen. And then they even told the Prophet ﷺ, إِذْهَبْ إِلَيْهِ فَهُوَ يُعَدِّيكَ عَلَيْهِ Why don't you go and join up forces with him? You guys have a common enemy. And they were all doing this as a joke. But at the same time, they got the attention of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ did look at this man and listen to what this man had to say. And it touched the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. Rahmatul lil alameen. His heart bled for people. He cried for people. He felt people's pain. The Prophet of Allah ﷺ was empathy personified. He was the beacon, the fountainhead of empathy. And so the Prophet ﷺ felt this man's pain. And he went to him, and he said to the man, he said, why don't you come with me? Why don't you come with me? We'll try to, I'll help you out with this. We'll try to take care of this. So the narration says, فَخَرَجَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ حَتَّى جَاءَهُ فَضَرَبَ عَلَيْهِ بَابَهُ And the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم took the man, went to the house of Abu Jahl, and knocked his door. And the narration says that Abu Jahl said from behind the door, Man hadha? Who's there? The Prophet of Allah ﷺ said, Muhammadun, fakhruj. The, it's, it, it's kind of interesting actually. The Prophet of Allah ﷺ, I mean, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ right? I mean, his character is unmatched, superb. But part of that character is at the same time not being a doormat. Part of that character is also having a little bit of swagger to you. Dignity, honor. And so the Prophet of Allah ﷺ says, Muhammad, come outside. So he said, who is this? Who's there? And he said, it's Muhammad, come on outside, I need to talk to you. Fakhruj, come on out. Because he knew how Abu Jahl was going to react. The narration says, فَخَرَجَ إِلَيْهِ and, and one of the narrations actually says that when he hears the name of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ says it's Muhammad, then he actually responds. One of the narrations says that he actually responds by saying, Mada turi? What do you want? And it, the narration says that you could hear the disdain in his voice. Like, oh you again. What do you want? What do you want? As he was walking towards the door, he said this with the disdain in his voice. And you could hear the disdain. You could hear the disapproval, you could hear the disgust in his voice, that tone that he had. But the narration says, when he came out and he opened the door and looked outside, فَخَرَجِ إِلَيْهِ وَمَا فِي وَجْهِهِ قَطْرَةُ دَمٍ قَدْ أُنْتُقِ عَلَوْنُهُ When he came outside and he opened the door and he looked outside, the narration says that there was not a single drop of blood in his face. Like he had gone pale. He looked like he'd just seen a ghost. He looked terrified, he looked pale, and he'd seen the Prophet ﷺ before. And the Prophet of Allah ﷺ said, أَعْطِي هَذَا الرَّجُلْ حَقَّهُ He said, give this man what he deserves from you. Abu Jahl responds to the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, لَا تَبْرَحْ حَتَّى أُعْطِيَهُ الَّذِي لَهُ He goes, don't worry, don't worry, don't go anywhere, stay right here, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Let me just go really quickly grab what belongs to him. فَدَخَلَ فَخَرَجَ إِلَيْهِ بِحَقِّهِ فَدَفَعَهُ إِلَيْهِ He ran inside, left the door open, grabbed some money, came back outside, handed it over to him, and he goes, here you go. ثُمَّ انصَرَفَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet ﷺ turned and head back. وَقَالَ لِلْإِرَاشِ And he said to this Irashi individual, he said, الْحَقُّ بِشَأْنِكَ He goes, here you go. Here's what you deserve. Here's your stuff. So the Irashi man went back to the haram and he 
wanted to he wanted to express his appreciation and he started telling people jazakallahu khairan qad akhadtu alladhi li he says may god reward this man this man who came with me muhammad and i received that which belongs to me so the people became very confused the people became very confused they're like that doesn't sound like abul hakam abu jahal that doesn't sound like abu jahal Abu Jahl doesn't just keel over, just doesn't give in like that. Doesn't sound like him. So they asked Abu Jahl, like, bro, seriously, like, what's wrong with you? I mean, everything okay? Like, you alright? You feeling okay? Like, that's kind of, you got, you got pushed around, man. Like, first of all, this dude's a villager. And then he comes to your place with Muhammad of all people. Who you've tried to strangle and you persecute his people and you're after him all the time. And then all of a sudden you just hand everything over like that? Like what's going on with you? Abu Jahal tells the people that when Muhammad came to my home, he said, Way hakum. He goes, You people have no idea what you're talking about. Way hakum. You people need to shut up. You people have no idea what you're talking about. He said, "Wallahi ma huwa illa in darba alayya babi wa sami'tu sawtahu." He says, "Famulitu ru'ban." He says that as soon as he came and he knocked my door and I heard his voice, I became furious. I was angry. Like this dude comes to my house. This dude comes to my house. Thumma kharajtu ilayhi and I came out ready to give him a piece of my mind. وَإِنَّ فَوْقَ رَأْسِهِ لَفَحْلًا مِنَ الْإِبْلِ And I came outside and I opened the door and I looked at him and standing behind him, towering over him was the largest camel I have ever seen in my entire life. And not just a camel but فَحْلًا مِنَ الْإِبْلِ It was a male camel. And فَحْل was a word not just for male camel that was used in classical Arabic but like wild camels. The wild desert camels that were not tamed that were even known to be a little like mentally unstable, these animals. These animals were actually known for killing people. They were like mad camels. Mad camels, crazy, unstable camels. And they were wild, and they would actually kill people. And, and the, there are, there's poetry that talks about these types of camels. The way that they would kill people a lot of times is, you know, they, they were huge. And they had huge heads and a huge big old mouth. And so what they would do is, they would grab a person by the head from on top like this, just straight up, like a, like a suction cup. They would just grab the head of the person on top, and they would just toss him, fling him around, break his neck and just fling him around, and then throw him. And then they just walk about on their way. They're just crazy animals. So he says, I came outside and I saw this humongous camel. مَا رَأَيْتُ مِثْلَ هَمَتِهِ I've never seen a camel this huge before. His head was humongous. And all I could think about was my head. Big old humongous head. وَلَا قَصْرَتِهِ وَلَا أَنْيَابِهِ لِفَحْلٍ قَطُّ فَوَاللَّهِ لَوْ أَتَيْتُ فَوَاللَّهِ لَوْ أَبَيْتُ لَأَكَلَنِي And I swear to God that when I saw this camel and how furious and angry and unstable and crazy he looked, I felt that if I say no, this camel is just gonna just grab me by the head and kill me. So I ran inside and gave Muhammad whatever he was asking for and just wanted him to leave with this demon that he had come to my home with. One narration actually does say that he, he describes a camel as being like a jinn, a demon. It wasn't just a camel, it was like a camel possessed by a demon. It was a jinn possessed camel. And so it's, it's just a little interesting story that talks about this. There's another very similar story where the Prophet of Allah ﷺ goes to the Baytullah, he goes to the Kaaba and he's making tawaf. And as he's making tawaf, Abu Jahl is sitting there with his buddies, with his homies, acting like children. And every time the Prophet ﷺ walks by, they taunt him. They say rude, crude things about him. And once, and twice, and three times. And some of the narrations actually mentioned that they were being very crude. Like extremely just, just disgusting in their behavior. Saying very, very foul things. And so finally the Prophet of Allah وسلم, just to kind of get them quiet, I mean this is inappropriate behavior even in public places. So the Prophet of Allah وسلم, walks over to them, and they get kind of quiet, and they're still you know, kind of chuckling like, you know, acting like children. 
And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Wallahi, I swear by God that Allah has sent me to you. قَدْ بَعَثَنِي اللَّهُ إِلَيْكُمْ بِالذِّبْحِ Allah has sent me to you with sacrifice. Like dhibh means to sacrifice, like to cut the throat. He says, Allah has sent me to you with sacrifice. بِالذِّبْحِ and, and I mean, of course the scholars discuss what could that mean. That could be talking about a number of things. We just had Eid al-Adhiyah, the Udhiyah, right? Like Eid al adha So it could be talking about a number of things. But the Prophet of Allah ﷺ just said that to them. And because he was known to never lose his cool, he was known to always speak the truth, never say anything out of line, everybody just got taken aback. And they said, what are you talking about, Ya Muhammad? This is unbecoming of you. You're a dignified, honorable man. Also an honorable man, right? You're a dignified, honorable man. You belong to the family of Abdul Muttalib. How could you say something like this? And the Prophet ﷺ went about his way, quietly just continuing his tawaf, and everybody was quiet after that. So there were some very interesting exchanges in some of these early days at that time. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.